26th. 26th. Hi, John Lankin here from Fairlight again, and um, today we're just going to have a look at some of the other clever things we can do with the self-labeling keys on our Zenergy Media Production Centre. So come on in, John, and I'll show you. In our first demonstration, we discussed mega modes, where I can basically change the character of the keyboard depending on the mode I'm operating in. So whether I'm a mixer, a recorder, an editor, monitor, setup, and project. There's a couple of other modes that we think are pretty clever. One of these we call expanding keys. In workstations, often you want to actually mark out a range across a, a, a range of time. If I press the range button, you'll notice that the keys adjacent to it now display from and to. So I can hit the from button, go into job, and pretty quickly hit to. And now if you pop up here for a second, John, we've marked out a new range and we can apply some editing functions to that mode. So we call that expanding keys. In a function like loop, there's all sorts of loop modes that we might want to engage. So I might want to loop for two plus three. And if you look at the displays up the top, you'll see that we've got all of these choices to choose from. So we've got another mode of expanding keys that we can use on the Zenergy workstation. Other states are, of course, color changes. In our record function, as we saw yesterday, the keys will go red. When we're in our solo menu, we can actually go and solo these tracks, or we can go and mute these tracks. We've got really quick visual status of what's happened to those particular channels. So we've got color changes also. Another mode that's possible is animation. We can animate the keys for things like alerting us that the mix is online. So if I pop the mix online and pop the automation on, and I'll just to put, take it over the top, we'll switch uh, preview on. Now we've got all these flashing animated keys to let us know that we're in, in fact, an ARM status in our automation uh, system. Another clever way of using our key switches is a mode where we allow you to return to the currently selected state whilst changing another setting. You'll notice if I hit the monitor switch and hold it, I can go and monitor sub 1, which is my dialogue track, but when I release it, the keyboard instantly returns back to the editor mode. Likewise, if I go to the mixer and I want to go and select my dynamics to process, and I release the mixer key, now we're back into the status of the edit mode. Another really clever use is our on-demand QWERTY keyboard. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to name this path up here, which is track 1. So I press name path, it gives me the QWERTY keyboard, and in this particular instance we're going to call it John D. Enter. Now if you zoom in here, John, you'll see that we've actually labelled this track switch John D. If you look over to this part of the keyboard here, we can actually toggle this menu between trim and slip, just like that. So we can actually use toggle functions uh, on our key switches. Yes. Right, we've also got an application launcher, I like to call it, and that's under this Fairlight key just here. So if I hold that down, you'll see that now we can launch a range of different applications. I can go and get my Japanese um, QWERTY keyboard, or I can go and launch my um, Internet Explorer, and if we go over to the uh, screen over here, you'll see that we've just managed to pop up the Fairlight website. And in the meantime, our keyboard has returned to the standard QWERTY mode, so we can go and browse around the Internet. So, that's just some of the uh, exciting things we can do with our key switches. I hope you've enjoyed our little demo.